and Ohio State up to this point in cold weather. And meanwhile, we told you about Roy Jones and the date with James Tony, potentially November 19th. Roy, how you doing? How you doing? Right. Welcome to ringside. What uh, what prompts you to be willing to surrender your IBF middleweight championship for the chance to fight Tony at 168? Well, it's um, not for sure that I am going to have to surrender my title because uh, I do have a fight that King has won the bid with, with Bernard Hopkins. But Tony says he wants to fight me real bad, and if that's so, I mean, I don't want to ever appear that I'm running from anybody, so you know, I'd be able to get my title up to take this one. This doesn't seem like it's going to be an easy title to take, but I know I can because I am the man. He says he doesn't like you. He says he does, doesn't like all of the glory you've received as a past Olympic star. You feel the same way about him? I, he don't have any glory that I think that I should be jealous of because right now, like I said, I am the man. If he's upset because I'm the man and he's not, then he has to come beat the man to be the man. What do you think about the fight you're watching right here? Well, it's a good sluggish fight because uh, Prince Charles is pushing issues so much. He went out, he got coached Tony, made Tony tired early. Now, Tony is the better boxer with the hands, but the pressure is making it very difficult because Prince is staying so close to him. Uh, with him staying that close, Tony is not able to land any real, real power shots. And uh, it's being a difficult fight for Tony. That was an overhand right that was pretty powerful, but then he stops. So. It's no telling what can happen. Prince Charles' eyes messed up now, too. But maybe Prince Charles is starting to slow a little bit. And he has an overhand good. right that again does some damage as James gets some space and once again begins to open up. Right. Final question, Roy. Yeah. You lose a chance at a big payday if Prince Charles Williams wins the fight. You got to be rooting for Tony to win. Oh, yes, I definitely want Tony to win the fight because Tony wants to show down against the man, Roy Jones Jr. And I think it's uh, prominent that he get it. You know, there's, there's no sense in him having to go up and wait before you get a chance to try the person that he admires most. Another good right hand inside by Tony. Roy, thanks very much for your time. Look Thank forward you very to much seeing too. you down the road. All right. All right. Roy Jones Jr., IBF middleweight champion, potentially an opponent down the road for James Tony. And now let's get back to the action where George the left eye of Prince Charles Williams is suddenly in trouble. That's right. Tony is taking control of it. How is he taking control? Well, he's starting to use his left jab and throw that right hand right over top. If he can continue to do that without this bumping and shoving football stuff, he could take control of this fight. He's landing important body shots, left hooks to the body. Tony is doing everything right, but he may have started it a little too late. Is it because of James's body work inside that Williams has chosen to back up and leave room on a few occasions? That's right. When you keep hitting a guy underneath that body, underneath those ribs, at some point you got to stop and protect yourself and cover up and, and stop that hurting. And uh, it's opening up things good for James Tony. James Tony trying to show us he can win one more way. He's done it here on HBO just about every way imaginable. James Tony is measuring it and, and uh, uh, taking it real conservative with, with his power. He lands two good shots. He doesn't go for four or five. He goes back to two good ones because if he burns himself out punching, he's in trouble. I thought that was a terrific round for Tony. Look, any fighter, no matter how good he is, can't just have his way out there. It depends what the opponent is doing. He's fighting a good opponent who is putting all that pressure on him and he's standing up to him and now he's getting his distance because he was able to stand up to him. James, how's the vision in that left eye? I'm good, baby. The commission doctor has just taken a look at Prince William's eye right, and said right. something to the referee. I'm right, President Dogg. You smile a little bit, doesn't it? I did. Man, watch out, watch your head, baby. All right, seconds out. Out. Let's go. Push him out. Seconds out. Seconds out. Come on. Come on. Come on. A little more boxing in round seven than had been the case up to that point. James Tony has now managed to land 13 jabs in the fight. As round eight begins, they go back inside, and very quickly, right here in the early stages of round eight, we turn to Harold Letterman for his scorecard. Harold, how you got it? Jim, 67-66, four rounds to three, James Tony. He clearly won round six and seven by stepping back to landing hard right hands that we saw. But I'll tell you, up until the sixth round, three quarters of the punches we didn't see, all we saw was a guy's back. But I think that James is starting to step back, starting to get the distance and land the hard right and take control of the fight. 
Come on. I think James Tony is a better fighter than even he thinks himself that he is. Well, I think he proves that virtually every time out, George, because he faces so many different kinds of challenges and finds a way to win. I'm amazed. I'm truly amazed. Not to say he's won his fight. Not by a long shot. Come on, your hands are free. Let's go. Let's go home. Another thing you've got to love about him, he's active because he's willing to fight tough opposition. James Tony doesn't run scared from anybody, Roy Jones Jr. included. A little bit of a breather on, round so yeah, far in round yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For both Tony and Williams, not quite as active a round as was round Wait, seven. Right uppercut by Williams, backs Tony up into the corner. Another body flurry by Tony. Both fighters have shown guts and grit and commitment. That's what Prince Charles don't want to be on the end of Tony's shot. He's got to keep that distance about a foot away and don't lose it. Now the crowd begins to kick back. Tony, Tony, Tony. Williams takes just a little bit longer to wind up and deliver the jab than is the case with James. He's out there. He's on the territory now. His fight is staying there even if you don't have the punch and just stay close. Prince, let him go, Prince. Come on, let Prince Charles. Come on, Prince, let him go out of there. Come on, work out of there. should manage to stay on the side of the road and allow Williams to circle him and just keep throwing punches as he's going backwards rather than just laying on the rope. Now he's decided to do it. Let's go back. It's like a moving punching bag into you. And after the bell, right hand by Tony. to take the point away. So any and all good work that Tony had done in that round is squandered by that punch after the bell. But I think he didn't cause it. It was Prince Charles who initiated that. As soon as the bell rang, boom, he got Tony. Yeah, but Tony retaliated, George. Yeah, man, and so these young fighters, hey, they're not going to give you an edge like that. You've got to pay them back. Let's take another listen to the end of round eight.